to talk about the extra credit two that you guys have um, and this extra credit two is part of your semester project um, I can't remember which slide it is on your project but it's the frequency table slide um, and I have a list of data values here that I kind of randomly picked and I'll create I'm not going to finish the whole thing but I'll start to create the uh, frequency table um, in the process that you're supposed to if that makes sense so following the instructions so that's what you're doing for extra credit too you're creating a frequency table specific with um, how we create it based on the instructions and then a little bit of analysis so let's just go through uh, hopefully you guys know how to find this stuff so you can find your semester project information page if you go to your modules and scroll down and you'll see a semester project information page specifically it says that um, okay extra credit two is creating a frequency distribution table so using the 35 values that you created for extra credit one so that systematic sample that you created or um, for extra credit one um, you're using again now you'll be using that same sample for everything for your project so make sure that you sampled it properly you can ask your instructor if you need to um, when you will create a frequency distribution of 10 classes if you did not collect the 35 values yet then you have to go back to extra credit one and do that basically to do this and all of this is going into the semester project so you still have to do this process if you don't do it now you still have to do it later for the project so it's up to you right at what point you want to do it all right so um download and use the template now technically the template is for the project for this particular extra credit you don't need to um upload the whole template so some of you are uploading the whole template not the whole template um, you can copy your work from the slide that corresponds to this particular process, the frequency table, paste it into the text submission area, um, and, and or I tell you guys, you could do word for me if you want, but just submit that one part. We're not grading you on anything but this frequency table, right? So um, first thing is to calculate your class width, and if you want 10 um, classes or 10, you know, which is what I have here, 10 classes so I have 10 rows here and then total I need to find the class width so that's the first step let's calculate the class width and I'm following the instructions okay that's all I'm doing I'm following the instructions and it says to take the maximum minus the minimum and then divide by 10 so let's start there um, now if you guys um, want to you can input all these values into your calculator and I suggested and I should have done this before this video but I didn't I suggested to my students to put all of their um, calculator values all these um, values from their systematic sample into L5 and just make sure that you have it in there properly I'm gonna go and copy this even though um, because you're gonna use it over and over again. And you don't typically use L5, so that's why I said stick it there, because you're using the other list for, you know, um, different things. Um, 419. So if you stick it over there, it's not gonna be such a big deal. It's not gonna affect anything. So you're gonna do this for your sample, okay? You're gonna input all 35 values, if you haven't already, into your calculator input all 35 values so you could take this time to do that um or you can fast forward this because i'm going to do it for this random example here okay so okay make sure you put all of them in and again i'm putting them in l5 because i'm going to want to use this again and not have to input um 35 values over and over again because I'm going to use the same systematic sample <clears throat> for all my other extra credits and my project. Oopsie, make sure you input it properly. And I would just say because you're going to use this for all of your um, projects, just double check, okay? Make sure that all of these are correct. 
you know, go through it again. I'm not going to do that here only because I'm doing this quickly. But make sure that you guys do this correctly. Um, see, I think I just redid something. Yeah, 314. Okay, see what happens? My eyes play tricks on me. And if you need to cross out the ones that you did, So do this for your sample. If you want to see if you're doing it correctly, you could do it along with me with this sample, but do this for your sample, okay? This is, put your values in here and see how I have 36, I'm on the 36th one, so 35 above it. I put it in L5 again, so I'm not bothering the other list because sometimes I use L1 and L2 for other things. And then I have them here, I don't have to redo them, but I would definitely go through and just make sure they're all correct, okay? I also suggested to my students that you should put them in order from least to greatest, which your calculator will do for you, which is nice because you have 35 values here. So go to stat, sort A, enter. I put it in L5, so second five, so that L5 is here because this is the one that I want to sort, enter. And so when I go back to stat and calc, I'm sorry, and edit, now they're in order from least to greatest. So it's easier to list them and it's easier to determine your maximum and your min. Because now my maximum is 2514 and I'm going to use that to calculate my class width. 2514 minus my minimum, which is 37, always divided by 10. So you guys are going to use the maximum for your particular sample and the minimum for your particular sample and then divide by 10, okay? I'm doing this as an example. You guys are doing it for your sample. So 25, 14 minus 37, and you could do it with me. Divided by 10, pause this and everything. Tw uh, 247. So I did my max minus my min divided by 10, and I got 247.7. So I'm following the instructions. Calculate your class width using your max minus min over 10. I did that part. If you get a decimal, go up to the next number. Okay. I got a decimal. Go up to the next whole number. 248 is my class width. That is important. Otherwise, I can't get my classes. So now I have my class width. <clears throat> um, this is just an example, so you could look at this as an example as well. Find your lower bounds and then enter them into the table. So your first lower bound, and this is lower, um, lower class limits, will be your minimum. My minimum was 37, right? And you can always go back to your sample, stat, edit. <clears throat> my minimum is 37. So the lower class limit for my first class is going to be my minimum, which is 37. For you, you're, you're going to start at your minimum, whatever that may be. And then you're going to take your minimum and you're going to add the class width that you just calculated to get to the next lower class limit, 285. Then you're going to do that again. Take this lower class limit and add your class width again to get to the next lower class limit, 533. I'm going to do it again. Add my lower uh, my class width again, plus 248 again, to get to the next low, oops, lower class limit, which is 781. Now, I'm not going to do my whole table. You guys are going to do your whole table. You're going to keep going until you get to 10 total classes. But you just found your lower class limits, right? Your first lower bound will be your minimum. Your second lower bound will be your first lower bound plus the class width. That is what we just did, right? You take your minimum, add your class width to get to the next lower class limit. Keep going until you finish all 10. How do I find the upper class limits? I'll read the instructions just to compare them with you. Um, your first upper bound will be your second lower bound minus one. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of stuff, but I mean, obviously if this one starts at 285, this one has to end at 284 because I can't have overlapping in my frequency table. 
And this one starts at 533, this one ends at 532. If this one starts at 781, this one ends at 780. And I continue to do that, right? Again, you're doing this for your particular values, okay? I'm just doing an example, running through an example. You're not using the exact numbers that, I'm, that I have here. Keep doing that until you get to your 10 classes. Then you need to find your frequencies. So if you're following the instructions, enter the frequency for each class. So basically, what do you have to do? You have to say, well, my first class, in my example, goes from 37 to 284, which means anything that's in that interval of numbers is going to go into my first frequency. I like to tick things off as I go, so like one, um, two, actually it might be easier to go here, back to my calculator, go to my list in L5, because it's in order, it can be easier to determine frequencies this way. So I keep going, so 314 is the first one that's not in this first class. So if I scroll over to 275, I'm at the 14th value. And if you want to, um, you can just count them. So this is probably the easiest way to find your frequencies because this is already ordered from least to greatest. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And this I'm not including because it's not in this first interval. So my frequency for my first class is 14. Keep going. The next one's going to start at 285 and end at 532. So I'm going to count until I get to something that is greater than 532. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, this one's too big. My frequency is 10. So I didn't include 535, right? Next one. 535 is 1, 2, 3, four, five, stop, so five, because I'm only going to 780 here, five. And check this out. It looks like it jumps from 654 to 1087 to 1087. So this interval from 781 to whatever it ends at, there's nothing in that interval. So if there is nothing in your interval, then you would just put zero. I'm going to verify 781 plus my class width, which is 248. So see, actually, it's not zero. I didn't think so. so this one is going to start at 1029, so this one ends at 1028. So if I go back here, and again, you guys are doing this for your... Um, you're doing this for your particular set of data, okay? So, look at that. No, it is zero. So there are no values in this interval from 781 to, to 1028. It jumps from 654 to 1087. So this frequency is zero. Keep doing that until you get to your 10 classes and just verify that you didn't miss anything by taking the sum of this column it should add up to 35 because you have 35 values in your sample or you should so um double check right make sure that that adds up to 35. you are asked to also calculate your relative frequency find the relative frequency and round all decimals to four places no fractions so um we can do that easily that's not a big deal <clears throat> remember your relative frequency is and they said you can do this process in your calculator as well but yeah you could do it for each one as well to find the relative frequency for the first class I would take the frequency and divide by 35 I'm always dividing by 35 because there's 35 total values so my first relative frequency is 0.4 and if your teacher or professor is specific and they're specific in rounding to four digits, then that would be 0 .400, 0 .4000. My next relative frequency is the frequency of that class divided by the total 35 
and round it to four digits, 0 0.2857. Be careful how you round, okay? Um, the next one, frequency divided by total data values, 35, is 0 0.1429, okay? Keep going, find all your relative frequencies and just double check that the sum of this column is approximately one. When I say approximately, I mean almost one, like 0 0.999, 0 0.99. Make sure that it's extremely close to one because if it's not, then you calculated something incorrectly here or maybe one of your frequencies are incorrect, okay? Not too bad. And then write at least two quality sentences explaining. In your own words, explain what you did to fill in each column of the table. Explain the process of creating your frequency table. Explain it in such a way that anyone can understand or create it following your instructions. Talk about how you found your class width. That you rounded up. How did you determine your classes? You started at your minimum. You added your class width to get to the next lower class limit. You continued to add your class width to get to the next lower class limit. How did you find your upper class limits? How did you find your frequencies? How did you find your relative frequencies? I've had some students put like step one, step two, but they explained it in such a way that we can recreate the frequency table based on their instructions. That's the important part. That's what I'm looking for. What does the table reveal about your data that you didn't know before organizing it? And you know, you might see, uh, I highly doubt you guys are gonna find a symmetric type of situation. A lot of these are skewed to the right. Um, you'll determine if it's skewed based on the fact that, let's say you have a lot of frequencies that are high here and a lot of uh, lower frequencies here, which would kind of give you this, you know, kind of skewed to the right type of situation. So that's something you could talk about, skewness. Um, you can talk about how it's not normally distributed, different things. Uh, for me, I'm probably gonna look at you know, skewness. Because that's where we're at this this week, you know, that's where we're at during the time that we're talking about this. We're talking about skewness. Is it skewed to the right? Is it skewed to the left? Why? Is it normally distributed? Why? How can you determine that? So you can kind of look at that frequency table and determine that. So again, class width, max minus min, divided by 10, round up to the next whole number, start at your class min, or start at your minimum value, add your class width to get to the next um, minimum value and keep going, or the next lower class limit, and then fill in the upper class limits based on the fact that it should be one less than the next lower class limit. Frequencies, how many values in your data set in that class, Make sure that column adds up to 35. Relative frequency, frequency divided by 35, round to four decimals. Make sure that column adds up to one. Describe in detail what you did and how you, count, you found your, you know, everything, how you created your frequency table so that anyone reading it can also create it following your instructions. And then um, what do you see? Do you see symmetry? Do you see any, like, is it skewed, skewed to the right? Skewed to the left? What do you see? Talk about it. And that is extra credit too. And whatever slide that is on the semester project, this is the frequency distribution slide. But when you're submitting extra credit too, you are not submitting the whole template. You're just submitting the information that corresponds to that one slide, okay? And it's, it's good to do these because then the feedback that you get will help you get a higher grade on your project. That's the goal here.